Good morning to all our colleagues joining us from the Americas. Good afternoon to all our colleagues joining us from Africa and Europe. And good evening to all our colleagues joining us from Asia. My name is Barry Gardiner and I'm your chair for this conference. Imagine a day when you can look into the future. A day when you can see 30 years of transformative change ahead. Change that treats plant species My and God. living creatures as essential partners in the fabric of life, rather than as objects merely for our disposal. That day was supposed to be today, the final day of COP15 in Kunming. But COVID has postponed all that. It's caused untold human misery and untold harm to the global economy. But the real question is, has it taught us the lessons we need to understand? That whatever we do for nature, we do for ourselves. And whatever we do to nature, we do to ourselves. Protect nature and we protect ourselves. But if we destroy nature, then we undermine the very support systems that sustain our own human life. COVID is a zoonotic disease, and just like SARS and Ebola and HIV before it, it's come about from the unsustainable pressure human beings have put on the natural world. If we count the global cost of COVID, we can never again say that we can't afford to halt the loss of biodiversity. The cost of meeting all the most ambitious targets that we could dream of in Kunming is a fraction of what we've already spent. The cost of not meeting them is incalculable. Now, as politicians, we're supposed to be good at taking decisions, at prioritizing. Well, getting the right outcome next year at the twin cops of Kunming and Glasgow is the priority. That means no more business as usual, no more leave it for another government or another generation to solve. Often politicians speak as if there's a choice between an economic recovery and a sustainable green one. The truth is, unless it is sustainable and green, then it's not a recovery at all. People say the Aichi targets were too ambitious. We need to be more realistic, set achievable goals. But as legislators, many of us are saying they weren't ambitious enough. They are achievable. And realism means recognizing that there's no time to delay. Realism is about taking urgent, transformative action. So let's talk about the science and developing the data so we know what biodiversity we've still got. Let's talk about the subsidies and stop paying the polluters who are damaging our natural ecosystems. And let's set clear, ambitious targets and find the political will and the financial resources to deliver on them. Today, we've come to support the CBD to ensure that this day next year at COP15 in China, it's a success and we can look to the future, confident that we have one. It's now my honor to introduce the president of COP15, the Minister for Ecology and the Environment in China, His Excellency Minister Huang Rangqiu. <laughs> 